Everyone loves chocolate. Three million tons of it are consumed every year, half of it in Europe. But the success of chocolate has a dark side. While first world kids are enjoying the sweet taste, reality is rather different for Africa's children. According to a wide range of organizations, the chocolate industry is accused of covering up the trafficking of children and the use of child labor on the cocoa plantations. We have decided to investigate these allegations. But the truth can be dangerous. We will go undercover with hidden cameras and assumed identities. Is it true that young children work as slaves in the chocolate industry? Our journey starts in Cologne, in Germany. Every year, the chocolate industry gathers to promote and sell their products. Chocolate that is primarily made of cocoa from cocoa pods. First, we want to find out where the cocoa is from. The cocoa beans is from uh, South America or Africa? Africa. Elfenbein, okay. Christian. Africa and South America. Mostly from Ghana and Ivory. Ivory Coast? Ivory Coast, yes. Okay. Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast, yes. The Ivory Coast is the world's largest cocoa producer. But rumors abound about child labor and the trafficking of children. Where do you get the cocoa beans from? Um, the cocoa beans, they come from different regions uh, in the world, but most of our cocoa beans, they come from uh, Africa. Okay. Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana. Do you know where the beans are coming from in, in Ivory yes. Coast? Yes. You yes. do, sir. So we have that uh, tracking system that really goes back. Uh, we, have, we work with the three most important uh, chocolate manufacturers in uh, Belgium, uh, which is Barry Calabot, Cargill and Belcolade. Because I, I've heard rumors about, you know, child labor and trafficking. Do you know anything about that? Uh, they have, I think you then ideally speak about that subject with the people from Barry Calabout, for instance, because they make sure and that they have plans and they work together with the cooperatives uh, in those uh, regions where people are paid properly okay. for their uh, cocoa beans. Okay. The Swiss company Barry Kellebaud is the largest supplier of cocoa mass for the industry. Most of their cocoa comes from the Ivory Coast. How many people have you uh, employees in, in, for instance, in Ivory Coast? In, in, in Ivory Coast, particular, I don't know it by heart. In general, we have almost 1,000 people working in origin countries. In the oh, country. that's a lot. So out of the 7,500, almost 1,000 people are working in origin countries. What about the rumors? Uh, I've heard about rumors about child labor and trafficking. Does it exist, the trafficking of kids in Ivory Coast? To be honest, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if, if these traffics exist, and if it exists, uh, I presume that it is exceptional. I have been you know, a few times now in those origin countries. These are things I haven't seen myself. Uh, but if it exists, yeah, okay, it's clear that it should be condemned, and this is, again, something which is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, of course. But, okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. No one here seems to believe the rumors of child labor or trafficking. We decide to investigate further. We are going to West Africa. Our first stop is Mali. 
children are said to be smuggled from Mali to the cocoa plantations on the Ivory Coast. This is trafficking. The trafficking of children should not actually be possible. The largest chocolate manufacturers signed an agreement in 2001. It's called the Harkin Engel Protocol. It states that child labor and the trafficking of children are prohibited in the cocoa industry after 2008. We have arrived in Mali, one of the world's poorest countries. A country with little or no export. The authorities deny that children are being trafficked. That's why we're working undercover and using hidden cameras. We have allied ourselves with a local helper. His name is Yuxiao Traore. He runs a private school and a small hospital for the poorest citizens. in my uh, neighborhood where I'm living, I'm experiencing this every day. Yushao takes us to Sikasso in southern Mali. Okay, so this is the bus station. We're told that trafficking takes place from the bus station. This is the junction for all traffic to the Ivory Coast. Yushao says the children are bused to the border town of Segwa. And from there, they are smuggled across the border. We want to know more about the operation. So we go to the local union for the city's bus drivers. How is it with the trafficking of uh, children? And this is a dimension trafficking bay. A bay, dimension of the border. But I'm going to talk about Belembe, Garconna de Maya. Santan Fla, Santan Saba, Santan Nane. Musumanu, Santan Kele, Santan Fla. Since 2003, Idrissa Kante has tried to stop trafficking of children. He has statistics of the children he has rescued from trafficking. In 2006, we have been able to identify the children who have been able to find the children who have been able to find the children who have been able to find the children. In 2006, we have been able to find the children who have been able to find the children. In 2008 and 2009, he rescued over 150 children. His list includes children aged seven, children from Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. We visit the local head of the bus companies. Since he doesn't want to step forward, we use a hidden camera. While we talk, 
a man suddenly turns up. The man has spotted a girl entering a bus with a female trafficker. Maybe I can step in here and look down. I'll just step in and look. Once we get to the bus, the woman has disappeared. This is the girl, you yeah. know, that was yeah. a, uh, they took out of the, of the bus now. Yeah. Uh, what's your name? Maria. Uh, Ebony. Segu is a village 450 kilometers away from this bus station. But why is she here? Musoi. The girl says she's 12, but Yushao thinks she's younger. She was promised work in Burke, an area with many cocoa plantations. The girl is now handed over to social services, who will bring her back home. The situation today is uh, very, very sad to me and is heartbreaking. But this is not, not the first time, you know. My life is full of this kind of situation. This is why, you know, I really feel very, very bad and cry. Now we're heading to Zegwa, but we'll make a stop along the way. A village with 500 residents. Several children have disappeared from here after being lured away by traffickers. How many uh, children has uh, left your village to go to the Ivory Coast? How old are the, the children when they uh, leave? We drive on to Zekwa, a small border town only a few kilometers from the Ivory Coast. Our cover story is that we work for an aid organization. We're going to meet a local restaurant owner who is witness to child smuggling here. Is the trafficking going on from here every day? The restaurant owner contacts a trafficker who transports children on his motorbike. 
An hour later, the trafficker arrives. We promise not to mention his name. Mimi trafficker. Bon, trafficker ni frontier la ete se ka fa ko karsal be trafficker. Asi dova ke alevena bla dova la alevena bla. Bon, tabula kelen thala ko. Don frontier era la ni ko iba fa ko karsat trafficker ke galantike. Bon, ce vent a été donné au Sranaogne, au bout du Gikadama, en Fanabota, à tout blanc. Au vent, quand j'étais en Dama. Trafficking is said to take place from the city's bus station. Normally, this guarded crossing is used. According to the restaurant owner, this back road is used for illegal transport. It leads directly to the Ivory Coast. We go back and wait for the next bus. A few hours later, a bus arrives from Sikasso. In the chaos around the bus, the children walk away. The traffickers chase after them and surround them on their motorbikes. They will transport them across the border. We follow the traffickers by the unofficial back road. we find a boy who was smuggled across by a trafficker. Hey, Eddie, who got you flipped? Huh? Who got you flipped? Huh? Huh? Ali and Johnny. Huh? 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 Soon the boy will be transported further south. We leave Pogo in the northern part of the Ivory Coast, an area controlled by local militias who cooperate with the traffickers. inhabitants begin to talk about us. Researching the coca industry can be dangerous. On April the 16th, 2004, French-Canadian journalist Guy-André Kiefer was kidnapped in a parking lot on the Ivory Coast. He was doing a story about bribery 
and the laundering of cocoa money in the Ivorian government. He has never been found, and the case is still unsolved. We say goodbye to Yuxiao Traoré and send our new helpers undercover in the Ivory Coast. Just use it like, like this. Their job is to visit cocoa plantations and see if children work there. While they're going over land, we fly to the cocoa capital of Abidjan in the south. Abidjan houses the head offices of the largest chocolate manufacturers. Here we find Nestle, Cargill, ADM and Barry Calibor, who all have their head offices here with several hundred employees. 42% of the world's cocoa production come from the Ivory Coast. Together, these companies buy almost the entire production. In Abidjan, we meet Ange Aboa. He's a journalist for Reuters and has studied the industry for years. He describes the route from a random cocoa plantation to the chocolate manufacturer. It all starts at a cocoa plantation. The cocoa pods are harvested and the beans are dried in the sun. Then the cocoa beans are bought by intermediaries at one euro a kilo. They sell them to national exporters. The beans are then washed, packed, and sold. Now the price is two and a half euros a kilo. From the stock exchange, the cocoa is sold on to the chocolate companies. The companies turn them into cocoa powder or cocoa butter. The chocolate manufacturers make chocolate. A kilo of cocoa at one euro for the farmer becomes 40 chocolate bars. We are meeting the third largest cocoa exporter, Saf Cacao. They export to the US and Europe. They make a profit of more than 135 million euros a year. These cocoa sacks have arrived from a halfway station in the area. The cocoa will later be delivered to Nestle, among others. Tout d'abord, il faut que vous sachiez une chose. Moi, personnellement, je suis né dans le cacao. Et j'ai jamais trouvé un enfant de 10 ans ou de 15 ans ou de 16 ans ou bien de 13 ans travailler dans une plantation. Il n'y a pas d'enfant dans les plantations. Our undercover researchers have reached a cocoa plantation in the north of the Ivory Coast. They see several children. Some carry machetes for harvesting the cocoa pods. I 
je peux rassurer le monde entier. Le monde entier. Ce n'est pas seulement l'Amérique ou l'Europe. Aujourd'hui, la Côte d'Ivoire est un pays où il n'y a pas des enfants esclaves dans les plantations. Il n'y a pas des enfants qui travaillent dans les plantations. On a vérifié, on a mis des comités en place pour suivre et jusqu'à aujourd'hui, on n'a pas eu un seul rapport qui nous dit qu'il y a des enfants esclaves. Et même dans les frontières, So you don't think that the, the children from Mali and uh, Burkina Faso are being uh, trafficked to uh, the Ivory Coast to work in uh, the cocoa plantation? No, 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 no. We are the first producers of cacao. We are the first producers of cacao. And if we don't buy the cacao, you know a bit what a disaster it will create in the world. So today, we don't play with these words. I think that we have the proof. We can come and see. There are no slaves in the plantations in the plantations. Ali Lakis is one of the world's largest cocoa exporters. He sells cocoa to Nestlé, among others. He is adamant there is neither trafficking nor child labor in the Ivory Coast. We head back to Abidjan. Our research has raised interest at the highest Ivorian government levels. We're invited to meet the man officially in charge of the fight against child trafficking. He is the president's right-hand man and has asked for a meeting because he has heard about our investigation. Hello. Yeah, hello, how are you? Hi, thank you, and you, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, what are you doing down here? A uh, documentary about the, the cocoa uh, business and uh, about uh, the problems which has been in the cocoa sector. Which, which problem? <laughs> which one? Which one? <laughs> which one? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The children who is... Uh, the, the child labor? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the, uh, you... But you know about the problem? It's not a problem. It's not a problem. But because... I mean, we know what's happening, so yes. we know how to deal with it, yes. so it's, not, it's no more a problem. Let, yes. Let's go to my office. Yes, and then yes. We'll... thank you. Monsieur. It's more comfortable okay, to good. sit down. <laughs> I, I went to the north, uh, the northern part of Ivory Coast, the borders uh, up uh, next to uh, Sigwa. The traffickers just, you know, take the children and uh, go through the, the back road. But honestly, between you and me, okay, the crop, the cocoa crop, starts in October and finish in March. So if you see people coming in July, September, October, it's not for cocoa. There's no cocoa around. So it's not a work in the cocoa farm, in the cocoa farms. What is it about? I mean, there's people here, Cote d'Ivoire, it's like, uh, uh, I mean, w for those countries, when they're on vacation, they come, you know, there's uh, what we say in, in front, colony de vacances. They're coming in Cote d'Ivoire to have, I mean, Cote d'Ivoire is like, uh, we are foreign, we want to go to France, we want to go to United States to spend, I mean, for vacation, okay? They're coming for vacation. Mm -hmm. But you see a truck, uh, sorry, a bus with 20 kids, oh, they're going to work in a farm. But in September, in July, August, September, what are they going to do? There's no thing to do. In what about in April? In April, uh, that's different. Yeah, but I, I saw it in April, actually. In April, that's the only thing. I mean, that's the one thing we, we stop in April. People may, I mean, they will try to do it. But what you have to understand is that even if people try to do it, there is the law against, we've got the law, trafficking, uh, uh, child labor, everything. It's against Ivory Coast law. It's against. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for uh, taking your time to wait, wait, wait. We decide to visit the plantations ourselves to see if it's true that no children are working here. We choose a random plantation in the area where Safka cow gets its cocoa. Thank you. 
So they work there? Yes. The kids? Yes. We come across four little boys and a man. They all come from Burkina Faso. They don't seem to be on vacation. The plantation worker says the children are aged 10 to 12. None of the children goes to school or can speak the local language. According to international labor laws, this is illegal. We continue our search on other plantations. There are plenty of children here. We meet more plantation workers. Where is the Where is the Ah, okay. So we're going to the now. Ah, you're going to work at what At three hours. Okay. Is it the father? Il a voyagé. Ah, ok. Ça va? Ça va. Donc, vous tous travaillez dans le cacao là, mais actuellement c'est le repos, c'est ça? Ah, oui. Vous avez fini de récolter? Ouais. Ok. The two adult workers seem suspicious of us. Merci, hein? It's difficult to know if they are telling the truth because. Actually, some of them sounds familiar with the problem yeah. of using kids. Right now, there is uh, more communication about this issue. So, when they see someone with uh, white people asking about that, you know, they pay attention. I have yeah. a shirt and uh, the small camera, I can switch it on. So okay. Just... Yeah. Again, we'll use the hidden camera. Perhaps we'll get different answers. We meet a plantation owner. He's from the neighboring country, Burkina Faso. A child from Burkina Faso can be bought for 230 euros. And that's without haggling. The price includes transport, an indefinite use of the child. Most children never get paid. Sometimes children manage to flee the plantations. We meet two boys from Mali. They've worked as slaves on a plantation on the Ivory Coast. 
Did you uh, want to go to to work in the cocoa plantation? Ah, nega nega kawali. Ni ni bana kiti bara ke dro bi bugo. So ni suma ni suma la talfe. Ni ki bugo. Anku nga chapu ngo kono dole na na bul. Otugoro no kobo mini. Anto ofene ambul na. Anga ke si kungo kono. Ana si dole ga ka ko foro kono. Ale fene na na ka ni nga tugo an tugo fa fe. The use of child labor in the cocoa industry is prevalent. This is in spite of the international chocolate manufacturers in 2001 having signed a protocol to the contrary. Next, we'll contact the chocolate manufacturers who buy cocoa here. What are they doing to stop child labor in the industry? During our research, we come across Interpol. Shortly before we arrived here, they took action on some cocoa plantations in the eastern part of the Ivory Coast. Hello, mister. Elle s'est déroulée sur les routes. Elle s'est déroulée dans les marchés. Elle s'est déroulée dans les plantations où nous sommes allés en profondeur dans les deux premiers jours pour aller chercher des enfants. Et le second jour, nous sommes revenus à l'intérieur de la ville. Mais bien évidemment, quand on était au dernier jour, les gens se sont rendus compte que La police était présente. Ils ont commencé à cacher des enfants. Donc les enfants, on les cachait dans les maisons. Et puisqu'on n'avait pas accès aux maisons. How many children were uh, saved uh, in the operation Bia? Au total, nous avons eu à intercepter 65 enfants. Les 65 enfants, nous les avons remis à la structure chargée de l'audition des enfants. Ce sont des spécialistes d'assistance sociale. He shows us Interpol's report from the operation, stating that the children are from Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, Nigeria, Togo, and Benin. Nous avons effectivement interpellé des des, des trafiquants. Ils étaient au nombre de huit. On les a auditionnés. Were you surprised uh, to find children working in the plantation? Surpris. No. There is no doubt about the extent of the problem. The chocolate manufacturers should know these facts, since each of them has several hundred employees in the Ivory Coast. Thank you. Turn to Saf Cacao to confront the owner with our new knowledge and Interpol's operation. Last time you told me that uh, child labor doesn't exist, but uh, the Interpol has rescued uh, 65 children in an operation. What is your comment to that? C'est 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 médiatisé, c'est la catastrophe. L'État de Côte d'Ivoire, même les journaux en parlent, la télévision en parle, aux infos. Oui, on a trouvé un enfant dans une plantation, cinq enfants, et le gars, il est conduit directement en prison. Donc, vous conviendrez avec moi que l'État est en train de mener cette campagne de lutte contre les enfants dans les plantations. The CEO of Saf Cacao now admits there is a problem.
Now we're heading to Geneva in Switzerland. We want to show our film to ILO, a part of the United Nations. ILO is fighting illegal child labor and trafficking on an international basis. ILO and the chocolate industry signed the Harkin Engel Protocol in 2001. It was to stop child labor in the chocolate industry. Hello. Hello. I'm Mickey Mistracci. Frank Hagerman. Yeah. Nice to meet you. How do you feel about that? It's very sad. It's very sad to see, I must say. It's a very, uh, it's often, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I personally, I've been working uh, in the area of uh, uh, programs and policies against child labor for some uh, 13 years now. But every time you see something like this, you know, it, it serves as a, as a shocking reminder, I must say. And often enough, uh, you know, uh, I have to add, perhaps, uh, it's a, it's a feeling of, uh, of helplessness which overcomes you when you, when you see something like that. I, I mean, it's a very, uh, it's a very dangerous uh, uh, work uh, kids do in these uh, plantations. It's not only the machetes, but it's the, uh, they often carry heavy loads. Uh, we, we see that they are, they're often exposed to pesticides. Uh, mm -hmm. When you work with pesticides, uh, uh, the effects will only come out in, in 20 or 30 years. Uh. Yeah. Does the protocol work in your opinion? I think uh, we have seen uh, some progress uh, in the area. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the topic has been, uh, has been uh, kept in the international debate. Uh, governments have been sensitized uh, and some knowledge has been put on the table. But in terms of real change, uh, we have seen relatively uh, little so far. If you ask me now, well, how many kids do actually work in cocoa plantations in Cote d'Ivoire and, uh, and Ghana? I wouldn't be able to give you an exact figure. What are the chocolate companies really doing to combat the problem? According to the industry, they spent 6 million euros a year on aid programs in the last nine years. By comparison, Nestle had a turnover of more than 12 billion euros last year. We asked these companies for an interview. They all declined to see and comment on our film. They only issue a statement through their joint spokesperson. One passage states, the vast majority of cocoa farms are not owned by the companies that make chocolate or supply cocoa and we therefore don't have direct control over cocoa farming and labor practices. The industry will not accept responsibility for these conditions. We won't give up. We will make an extra effort to make Nestle, the largest food company, see our film. They have a world market share of 12% and have been present in the Ivory Coast for more than 50 years. They must know about the problems with trafficking and child labor. Nestle will now get a chance to see how most of their cocoa is grown. According to international labor laws, this is strictly forbidden. But it is also the opposite of what Sam Cacao and the other chocolate companies have promised the consumers. That child labor must not occur in the chocolate industry. 
In 2008 and 2009, he rescued over 150 children. His list includes children aged seven, children from Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. Mais c'est contre Nestlé ou c'est pour Nestlé C'est pas contre... Euh... 